In Learning Objective 4, we're going to look at external financing and growth, uh, specifically the internal growth rate and the sustainable growth rate and how to calculate it and what these things mean. The internal growth rate looks at how fast we can grow with no external financing, and the sustainable growth rate looks at how fast we can grow our company uh, sales with just uh, debt financing, no equity financing, while maintaining my debt-to-equity ratio. We said uh, to make money, it takes money to make money, so the uh, question is how much. In the last example you saw, we had a plug of 47.2 that we needed to plug into the equation to um, grow the company at 20%. The question is, how fast can I grow without any plug whatsoever? Uh, last t so we would have to go get uh, long-term debt. In the last example with Hoffman of 47.2, if that's $1 million dollars, that's a lot of money, 47.2 million to grow at 20%. The question is, what rate can I grow to just uh, achieve the growth rate I want without any external financing of any kind? This is called the internal growth rate. It's calculated by taking return on assets times B over 1 minus the quantity return on assets times B. I, used to, I like to say ROA times B over 1 minus ROA times B. So again, I have to go to the income statement in the balance sheet and look at the numbers and plug in the numbers to get the internal growth, growth rate. Now I'm trying to forecast what this growth rate will be. So which year, if you look back at the income statement in the balance sheet that we just created, which year do you think you go to? Do you go to year one numbers or year two numbers? The answer very simply is go back to year one. Always use year one when calculating IGR and SGR. Those are actual results. And from those actual results, you can calculate your internal growth rate for the future without any external financing of any kind. Uh, a good example of this might be uh, in your home life. Your parents may have a business. Mom and dad may have a farm or a small business back in your hometown. If they have an income statement and a balance sheet, you can calculate for them now how fast they can grow next year without any financing of any sort. And that might be something you talk with them over the dinner table some night and impress them with uh, how much you know about finance now. So I need to get an income statement, I need to get a balance sheet to calculate this internal growth rate. And then I'll do return on assets, and then income divided by assets times B, which will be the um, additions to retain earning divided by my total net income divided by one minus the same, one minus the numerator. So let's take a look at it for Huffman Company. Again, we're going to use year one. Let me overemphasize that, year one only. So I'm going to take 66 of net income divided by total assets of uh, 500. That will give me my return on assets ratio of 13.2%. That goes in the numerator and the denominator under ROA. A B we know will be two-thirds. We said we're going to keep two-thirds of our net income. Uh, 44 over 66. We will uh, plug in there for B. So it'll be 0 0.132 times uh, two-thirds uh, on the top and one minus the same, one minus the numerator on the bottom. And when I do that, uh, do the mathematics, I will get 9.65% as how fast I can grow Hoffman Company without any external financing of any sort. Remember that if we wanted to grow 20%, we needed 47.2 of external financing needed. If we want to grow at 9.65%, we need no external financing. And again, you could test this by taking uh, the year one numbers, the 500 in sales and the 400 of cost of goods sold, and multiply by 1.0965 on the income statement. Do the same thing down on the balance sheet and not multiply everything on the asset side by 1.0965. And you should come up with what plug on the right? The plug should be zero if you've done your mathematics correctly. So that's one good way to test out this growth rate that you calculate here. It's how much, how fast can I grow my sales and my cost and my assets without any external financing of any sort on the right side of the balance sheet. The answer in this case, 9.65%. Again, test it out. Take all the numbers by times, instead of 1.2, multiply them by 1.0965, and you should get a plug of zero when it's all said and done. Let's do the sustainable growth rate also. It's another key growth rate uh, to kind of bound things for Hoffman Company. This is the, how fast I can grow my company's sales and cost and assets without any external equity financing. Why not equity? Because it's expensive. If you have to get an investment bank to underwrite uh, a new issuance of stock, it will be very, very expensive, and sometimes into the millions and millions of dollars um, to float some new equity. Um, whereas it's a lot easier to just go get some debt, perhaps. Again, if your debt equity ratio isn't getting out of 
uh, control. So you may want to go with the less expensive route, just get some de uh, debt financing. So this is how fast I can grow my company with debt financing only, no equity financing, while maintaining a constant debt to equity ratio. Um, so let's do that and let's test it. So let's calculate the SGR. SGR is ROE times B divided by 1 minus ROE times B. So similar to the uh, internal growth rate, but I'm going to substitute ROE instead of ROA. So it looks very similar. Again, I'm going to use year one actual values to calculate this thing. So uh, first step, ROE is net income, return on anything, net in, uh, return on equity, net income over equity. I'll take uh, 66 over 250. 66 is my net income, 250 is my total equity off the balance sheet, uh, year one actual, and I get uh, 0.264, 26.4% return on equity. I'm gonna plug that in there, and my B is again two thirds, so it is 44 over 66. And you might just wanna leave that uh, as 44 over 66 rather than plugging in two thirds, because you'll see that the mathematics cross out very nicely and you're left with uh, 44 over 250 divided by 1 minus 44 over 250. When you do the math, you get a sustainable growth rate of 21.36%. Again, what does this mean? SGR means the rate at which I can grow my sales without uh, any equity financing. Debt financing only is permissible uh, while maintaining my debt to equity ratio. And again, we need to test this. So how would I test it? I take my actual values and instead of multiplying by 1.2, as we did in the Hoffman example, I multiply by 1.2136 and uh, see what my plug would be. I'd plug that all into debt and try and see and see if I maintain my debt to equity ratio from the last example. So again, always use year one actuals when calculating uh, IGR and SGR. Uh, don't use year two, don't get confused, because you're trying to calculate the rate at which you can grow, so use year one actuals. And again, the way you would test this um, sustainable growth rate number, I'd take my year one values, like 500 in sales, multiply by 1.2136, 400 in cost, multiply by 1.2136, and so on. Do the same thing on the asset side of the balance sheet. Uh, do nothing to the debt and equity uh, numbers on the uh, balance sheet on the right side and see what happens in terms of uh, what kind of a plug is needed. And the plug uh, will be such that I don't change my debt to equity ratio. So last year, if the debt to equity ratio was one, as it was, this year when I plug the plug into debt, it should equal, uh, should give me a similar debt to equity ratio of one. And then I know I have the correct sustainable growth rate at 21.36%. So try this Hoffman example. Um, Start with year one, multiply everything by 1.2136, and make sure you come out with the same uh, debt to equity ratio after plugging that entire plug into the debt account on the balance sheet. And again, that balance sheet's got a balance at the very end. So we see that determinants of growth, uh, what determines growth? A profit margin and how much of that profit that we keep versus give away. Dividend policy, do we even pay a dividend? One way to grow faster is to just keep it all. And a lot of uh, high, high growth companies do exactly that. Many of the companies you see listed on the NASDAQ are younger and uh, more quickly growing companies, and they take all their net income and plow it right back in, and that will allow them to grow faster uh, than to not do that, than to give some of that uh, profit away. So dividend policy has a big impact. Financial policy, how much debt do we take on versus equity has a big impact on growth. And also total asset turnover has a big impact on growth. And notice that these are several of the key components in ROE. So obviously ROE impacts growth.